before the James Webb Space Telescope was eventually put into orbit, Professor Stephen Hawking passed away. However, a significant portion of the new Space Telescope's time will be devoted to demonstrating some of the late physicist's hypotheses because of his extensive contributions to space science. The very last theory Hawking worked on before he passed away is one of them. In this piece, he defended the multiverse theory, which contends that a parallel world once had a precise replica of you. What does this theory entail? And will the James Webb Telescope ultimately validate Stephen Hawking's multiverse theory? Now that the James Webb Space Telescope has been launched, data that is required to evaluate one of Stephen Hawking's most contentious hypotheses can be obtained. The James Webb Space Telescope's launch could now provide the information needed to evaluate one of Stephen Hawking's most controversial theory, which asserts that dark matter, the intangible component that makes up the majority of the universe's matter, might be composed of black holes created in the Big Bang's earliest moments. According to the multiverse idea, our universe, with its hundreds of billions of galaxies and almost innumerable stars, may not be the only one in the cosmos, which spans tens of billions of light years. Alternatively, there may be a whole nother world and then another, and another, all situated far away from our own. This novel idea postulates the existence of an infinite number of universes, each with its own set of mechanics, stellar and galactic compositions, and perhaps even sentient civilizations. In other words, it's possible that our world is but a small portion of a much bigger, far wider collection of realities known as a multiverse. The presence of doppelgangers or replicas is implied by the multiverse, which makes it, as some people will say, creepier. The same patterns will ultimately repeat themselves if there are an infinite number of worlds, but a finite number of possible particle arrangements in each universe. That would imply that, at some astronomical distance, a precise duplicate of you would be watching a video just like this. Additionally, there would be an endless number of precise events occurring simultaneously since there would be a finite, infinite number of worlds. Three scientists have come up with a theory, according to Live Science, that not only explains the development of the biggest black holes in the universe, but also the presence of dark matter. They said that a number of new tools, including the newly launched James Webb Space Telescope, may generate the data required to finally evaluate Hawking's renowned idea. According to Live Science, study co-author and Yale University astrophysicist Professor Freenbrother Nottarajan said in a statement what she finds personally super exciting about this idea. Elegantly, unifies the two really challenging problems that she works on, that of probing the nature of dark matter and the formation of growth of black holes, and resolves them in one fell swoop. The formation of black holes, according to astronomers, only occurs after huge stars die and collapse under the force of their own gravity. Numerous stars are needed to form black holes, and these stars need a lot of normal matter. The amount of normal matter in the cosmos is currently known to scientists thanks to estimations of the early universe. However, they contend that there simply isn't enough normal matter to create all the dark matter, which accounts for more than 80% of the universe's substance. Stephen Hawking therefore proposed in 1971 that black holes evolved in the chaotic atmosphere of the Big Bang's early moments. The cosmos would have been flooded with black holes long before the first stars began to shine, according to his explanation that pockets of matter may spontaneously achieve the densities required to create them. In addition, he offered the possibility that these primordial black holes are what dark matter is. In their most recent study, Nadajiran, Nico Capaluti from the University of Miami, and Gunther Heisinger from the European Space Agency investigated the notion of primordial black holes, looking into how it can explain dark matter and perhaps answer other cosmological problems. They discovered that by looking for the first stars, galaxies, and supermassive black holes, SMBH, in the cosmos, primordial black holes may have had a significant part in the creation of the universe. They said that their findings suggest that stars, galaxies, and SMBHs emerged throughout the course of cosmic history very swiftly, maybe too quickly to be explained by the processes of creation and development seen in the universe as we know it. According to Capaluti in the statement, our discovery demonstrates that we may resolve puzzles of contemporary cosmology, such as the nature of dark matter itself and the genesis of supermassive black holes without adding new particles 
or new physics. Although this is just a model at this point, experts think it might be tested shortly. They said that the James Webb Space Telescope was created primarily to provide answers regarding the galaxy and star formation processes. Additionally, the Laser Interferometer Space Antenna, also known as LISA, a member of the next generation of gravitational wave detectors, is ready to disclose much more about black holes, even primordial ones if they exist. According to astronomers, the two observations should provide them with enough data when combined to piece together the history of the first stars and perhaps the beginnings of dark matter. Stephen Hawking passed away in 2018. Therefore, he was much more than three and a half years away from the James Webb Space Telescope's launch. The launch date was moved from between 2007 and 2011 as a result of many setbacks. Before starting to operate, this powerful space telescope needed to go through several months of calibration and testing after a successful launch and deployment of its parts. So how is this telescope able to prove Hawking's theory? The telescope is able to look inside other planets' atmospheres that are outside of our solar system. It is possible to see through enormous dust clouds to observe the formations of new stars and planetary systems. JWST will be able to collect and reflect light from the early cosmos. It will be able to see from the first stars and galaxies that were close to the Big Bang, which is predicted to have occurred 13.8 billion years ago. The JWST is an infrared telescope, which means it finds objects in space by detecting infrared light. It is capable of seeing astronomical objects like stars, nebula, and planets that are too cold or too dim to be seen with the naked eye in visible light. Although gas and dust look impenetrable to the human eye, NASA claims that infrared radiation may also flow through gas and dust. When compared to the famous Hubble telescope, which can view visible light, ultraviolet light, and near-infrared light, this is different. It is necessary to maintain the instruments on board at extremely low temperatures for them to function, minus 370 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. The substantial sunshade shields the telescope from the sun's heat and maintains the instrument's coolness. There were 344 single point failures or actions that needed to become successful for the mission to succeed, according to a report produced by an independent review board in 2018. The telescope, however, was successfully launched from the French Guiana spaceport of the European Space Agency by being hidden within the nose cone of an Ariane 5 rocket. It went live in December 2021. After the launch, it came loose from the rocket and started to expand. The first deployment occurred around 30 minutes after launch, as the solar panels opened up, allowing the telescope to receive electricity from the sun. Numerous astronomers are competing for time with JWST because of the telescope's potential. Astronomers were invited to submit suggestions on how they would like to use James Webb, with 6,000 hours of observation time up for grabs by the Space Telescope Science Institute, which manages science operations on Hubble and JWST. The initiatives of the fortunate ones have now been approved and we eagerly await the wealth of information they will impart to us. The amount of fuel aboard the Space Telescope ensures that the James Webb Telescope will operate for around 20 years, giving it plenty of time to reveal the deep mysteries of the cosmos. Now that the JWST has been successfully transported to its destination, which is around 1 million miles from the planet, it is time to verify Hawking's multiverse notion. The hypothesis is unique since it was the final one that the professor published in the study titled Smooth Exit from Eternal Inflation. A physicist at the Catholic University of Louvain in Belgium, the Bright Mind's final research was submitted for publication just 10 days before his passing. Hawking presented a theory for the universe's creation that may provide answers to certain unanswered issues. The paper was a last examination of one of his early notions, despite being his last piece of writing. The scientists behind the JWST will likely be contenders for a Nobel Prize if it finally contributes to the proof of the multiverse's existence. Sadly, Hawking will not be able to qualify for it since the Nobel Prize cannot be given posthumously.